Well, greetings, family. Pastor Jamal here. So I was thinking about a couple of things lately, especially this one thing. I was thinking about being young. I remember being young and I had this sense of invincibility. I mean, I didn't feel like I was like Superman or anything like that, but I had a, a, I had a love for uh, supernatural things. And actually, uh, Superman was my favorite superhero. And sometimes, you know, you could kind of overlook a thing and think, well, you know, that's, that's a typical young man's fantasy. But sometimes there are things in your life that point to things in your life and not even sometimes, most times. So I was kind of mulling that over the other day and thinking about remembering how nobody actually had to get me to believe the idea that I carried in myself instinctively about just kind of being invincible in this way. I never thought about being poor. I never thought of, about a lot of things that the world gets us to think about eventually. So I was thinking about that and as it relates to really believing in belief. So I kind of titled this Turning Desire into Substance, Understanding the Evolution of God-Given Desire. So this, this moment is about understanding how the process of turning hope into substance starts at the end, the finished work. It's knowing it's already a part of your life. But however, the process of substance coming into being happens when we're face to face with the opposite side of who and what God said we are. So it's something about being able to understand or being able to sense or even remember those moments like me I, remembering that I had this sense of invincibility. And as I'm going through life now, you know, really coming to grips with, you know, the Bible says, you know, we got to have childlike faith. We have to believe a child just instinctively believes things. You know, we talk about imagination a lot. A child just imagines and but the imagination comes from a real instinctive, intuitive, God-given place, especially when it's not tainted, you know, from time with the world or in the world, right? The specific God-given image or idea for your life is as strong as seeing your own reflection in the mirror. That's why you didn't have to believe for it. It was just existing inside your will almost like the name your parents gave you. You don't have to think about where or what that actually is because it's, it's built into you. So that's what those kind of desires are. There's, there, there are a desire, there are, there are desires, and there is a desire that's built into you like the name your parents gave you that God really wants you to understand or really wants you to remember and really um, hone into. That image is the end result of a specific process of faith that you'll have to go through, but you're actually a part of right now. That's why it feels so real. So this, this image, this instinctive desire, this instinctive God-given desire, you're actually a part of it now. Again, that's why it feels so real, but the object is, or the, the goal is to learn how to keep believing that instinctive thing in a way that starts to materialize it. Have you, you don't know if you guys ever watched Star Trek where they were on the, um, man, what is that thing called, man? When, when they, when they beam you up, Scotty, you know, that little beam thing. So sometimes you could, you're watching the person materialize right before your eyes. So there was no substance. There was nothing there. Then all of a sudden they turned the machine on and they, what was in one place now materializes into a new place or into another place. That's what it is. You have this thing, you have this desire that's in one place. And when you keep believing long enough, it starts to materialize where you actually are. So now I, I kind of want to just touch on this one thing really quickly. What is the difference between a God-given desire versus a fleshly desire? What is the difference? You can say a God-given desire is birthed from a place of divine seed, divine seed, while fleshly desire is birthed from a place of limitation reaction, meaning 
It was developed from seeds from a spirit of fear, per se. While again, the God-given desire was and is, in essence, a part of the natural design for your life. It's like the oak tree inside of the acorn. That's how effortless God-given desire reveals itself. So why is this important to know? It's important to know because we all struggle with believing when we're faced with the opposite of what we have instinctively known to be divinity's image for our life. Now, we may not say um, God has this specific plan for my life at first, but it's it's kind of known within you. You don't have to look for it. It's, it's just there and it's it's just floating around in the ethers of your spirit, I guess. But nonetheless, it's God's, it's God's way of showing you the target. Now, again, the, the goal is to be able to keep believing in this way. You keep believing to the point that what is hoped for based on, now, okay, based on time. So let's just take me for, for, for instance. I had this invincible kind of idea about myself. Then all of a sudden I start to experience sickness and it, and it, and it just crept up and it kept going for years and it kept escalating. So I can either do one or two things. I can remember what it felt like when I felt invincible, when I was so intrigued about superheroes or, or being so powerful that I wasn't destroyed by, by anything, or I can allow the process of getting from A to Z and the, the, the time and the, all the ideas that's, that are wrapped up in time. So meaning all of the, the ungodly perspectives that men have that uh, we can decide to buy into, which ultimately destroys the truth that we started with. This is very crucial and key to understand because we all are in a place and we have a place that God has designed us to thrive from, but we have to be able to get there. But again, the, the, the great news is he showed you before. He gave you an idea before. Now, I will say not everybody has uh, had that kind of desire at the beginning. You know what I mean? Maybe you're at nine years old and you get it. Sometimes it may show up when you're 29, but nonetheless, it's going, something's there or something will be there to, to kind of guide you and lead you towards the target that God says that you are. And you're responsible for, for, for staying in belief mode in order to materialize that particular or those particular designs and desires that God has placed there. I pray it made sense, y'all. Pastor Jamal, rising ground. Let's turn those desires into substance, folks. I'll talk to you. Peace.